Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Shu Jun. Today I'm going to show you how to make any pixel gray pattern with Gray Jun. Open the website graygene.com. If you're a new user, you need to create an account first. You can click on this link here and sign up, or you can also click on the sign up button and sign up here. Enter your email address. And then you can see the send code button. Click on the button. There will be a verification code sent to your email. Then enter this code here and enter your lead password, then sign up. Or you can also use your Google account to sign up. Both ways are okay. Just to choose the way that is easier for you. Because I've already signed up, so I can go directly to login. Okay, email address and password, login. We're now at the home page. The website has two versions. So we have a free version. You don't need to pay and you can use the features like upload pictures, use all available colors, download charts as picture and a field feature, something like this. So you don't need to pay and you can use the free version. And we also we have a premium version. So you need to pay a $4 a month or $25 a year. And uh, something that is really important is there are no subscriptions. It means if you pay $5 this month and uh, to a value in this month, and we are not going to charge you more, the subscriptions will be canceled automatically. So this is really, really important. And here are the features for the premium version. And uh, we strongly recommend if you want to pay for the premium features, please try one day free trial of premium features before you decide to buy or not. Click on the create new button and uh, enter the number of the columns. The number of the columns means the stages of each row. You can enter any number here, but smaller than 192, let's say 50 for the columns. And then here's the rows of the pixel grade. Let's say 60. Confirm. Now we can start to paint. The first is the brush tool. We can click or drag on the pixel grade to paint any box. Let's select a red color from the right. Then click on the pixel grade. To change the color of each little box where we can drag on the pixel grade so we can do it faster. I'm really bad at painting, but I'm trying my best to make you understand how does this work. It's very freestyle, just to paint anything you want. If you want to change the brightness and saturation of the color, you can click on this button and move the little white dot. Okay, you can see the color is changing. Okay, maybe we can use a dark red. Okay, the color has been selected. We can back to the pixel grid and drag on it. Okay, you can see we're painting very well now. The next is the bucket fill tool. We use this, click on the pixel grade to apply the same color to adjacent areas. For example, if we want to change the color of these blocked, well, irregular circle, maybe we can choose the green one and then click on this. You can see the whole area has been changed to green. Let's do it again. Okay, green one. So we can click on the color palette to change the saturation of the green. Light green has been selected and we apply it to these areas. Just with one click, there, the color has been changed. Then we're going to use the Fermat Painter. It share the same position with the bucket fill tool. So we need to click on the same position again. We use the Fermat Painter to apply the same color to multiple areas of the whole image. Okay, I'll show you. If I want to change the white color of the whole image, 
I just need to select the color. Okay, maybe this orange. Then with one click and the white box. Now you can see all the white boxes in the whole image have been changed into orange just with one click. Okay, let's change the screen to blue. Okay, use the format paint again and click on any green box. So just with one click, all the green will be changed into blue. And here the light green. Okay, let's use a different color to change it. Okay, maybe sky blue. And uh, with one click, you can see if we use the bucket fill tool, we need to click twice. So we can change them into blue as we want. But if we use the frame paint tool, just with one click, okay, we can change them into hot pink. Let's do it again. Use a frame painter and change all the orange into white again. So it's really easy. So that's the difference between bucket fill tool and the frame painter. Next is the eraser tool. You can use this to click on or drag on the gray to erase box. Okay, just do it like this. It's the same like you paint, just with white color. Next is the eyedropper tool. You can click on the selected color and use that color in whatever way you want. For example, click on the dark red and the dark red has been selected. Use the bucket fill tool to apply this dark red to other areas. Okay, so just with one click like this. Then you can use this eyedropper, select uh, this blue and uh, use the frame painter to apply this blue to the hot pink areas. Next is the test button. We can use this to input letters. You can see now the pixel grade has so many different colors. We can click on the trash button and clear the background. Click on the test button again. So on the left, you can see something is showing up. Click on any place of the pixel grade and start to test. Okay, input any letters you want. Then click on the move button and move the word to any place of the pixel grid as you want. Change the font and choose an effect that you want. And also you can adjust the size of the font. Sixteen is uh, too big. Maybe we'll go back to 14 again. If you want to edit this word again, you can click on the edit button and test again and move it to any place you want and then change the size or the font. Okay, just in the way that you like and move it. If you want to change the color, so you can click on any color you want. Okay, and to change the saturation, click on the color palette. Okay, if you don't want it, you can click on cancel, but you think you have done, then click on confirm. Now you can see the pixel grade for this word mom has been finished. Next is the color condensation button. When you click on this button, it will show you all the colors from this image. Here it has white and red. This button is really important, especially when you import an image into the pixel grid and it will show you all the colors from the image. Then click on numbering the grid button. Let's zoom in so I can show you more details. We have three different numbering modes. The first one is to number all the boxes from right to left. And then the next one is back and forth numbering mode, especially for tapestry crochet. So in all the rows, we number the boxes from right to left and in even rows, number the boxes from left to right. 
You just follow the way we number the grades. Click on the bulb will highlight the rows that you're working on, and you can choose the row that you want. The last is the diagonal numbering mode. It's especially for a corner to corner crochet. So we can help you track the row and save your progress. When you crochet, you can either follow the graph or you can follow the written pattern. So both ways are okay. When you finish the pixel grade, you can export the image or export a PDF. I'll show you how does it look because we didn't choose numbering the grade. So you can see here is a very clean grade like this. So we don't have any numbers in it, but if you choose numbering the grade, so we have all the pixel grade numbered. And here's the PDF. We have a graph and followed with the written pattern. So you can use them even if you don't have the internet connection. Next, I'll show you how to import the image. Click on the button and uh, choose any image you want and open it. And I can see and uh, adjust the size of the crap box. Just make sure that the whole picture is in the crap box. But now I want the bottom of the image to meet the bottom of the crap box. So I can scroll the mouse and uh, reduce the size of the image and then adjust the size of crab box and move the crab box up. Now you can see there's still some space left at the bottom. That's not something I want. Then I need to scroll the mouse and reduce the size of the image again, then adjust and move the crab box. Now you can see the bottom of the image meets well with the bottom of the crab box. That's something I want. And if you don't want it, you can cancel. You can also turn it to the left and turn it to the right. Okay, just to choose a way that meets your needs. And then confirm. Now you can see here, because we have zoomed out, you can see here is 11%. We can click on this and reset the zoom. Now you can start to add in the image. There is a good way to find simple images. You can Google icon website online. There are many different options for icon website. Here is the one that I use the most called uswing.com and they have so many free icons to choose. You can search anything you want in a column. For example, I'm going to make a butterfly coaster. So I search butterfly here and download the picture. Back to our website and create new. Enter 22 for the columns and 22 for the rows. Confirm. Click on the picture button and uh, import the image into the website. Choose our little butterfly and open the image. Then adjust the size of the crop box and make sure the whole image is in the crop box. Confirm. Now you can see the little hand. So it means we need to click on this color quantization button so we can see all the colors from the image. Then we need to change the color of the edge because there are so many different colors here. Let's choose black from the color palette. Or you can also use the eyedropper to select a color from the image and then apply this color to any boxes that you want. We use the Format Painter, oh, not this bucket fill tool. Okay, click on this button again and choose the Format Painter, then apply the black to any color that you want to change. Now you can see just with a few steps clicking and uh, we almost have the shape of the butterfly. Now you can see the light gray here. If we apply the black, you can see it's becoming too black. That's not something I want, so we can undo it. I think this is something I want. Then we can use the eyedropper, select the background color and uh, apply white to this light gray. Then click on the color quantization again. So we have only two colors left in the image. Next, I want to change the color of the butterfly, choose hot pink and click on the color palette button and choose the light pink using the Fermat Painter and apply this pink to the butterfly. 
but you can see there are some boxes. Maybe I need to change the color of them. Using the eyedropper, select the color background, and then I'm going to use the brush tool to change the color of boxes. Okay. Just to edit the details the way that you want it to be. I think it's okay now. Then I'm going to change the color of the background. Choose the screen one. Change the saturation of it. Then I'm going to use the bucket field tool to change the background color. Oh, sorry, mistake. I used the frame my painter. That's not good. Okay, undo it and then use the bucket field tool and to do it again. Now you can see the whole image is finished sheet. We can click on the color condensation again to check all the colors in the image. Click on the number in the gray button. Now you can see on the left, we can choose the number mode that we want. I'm going to make a coaster so it's tapestry crochet. So choose the back and forth number mode. Click on the bob, highlight in the row, and we can start to crochet. Last, I'm going to show you how to make the Secure Me Pixel Gray pattern from an image downloaded from Google. Create new, enter 58 for the columns and 64 for the rows. Click on the picture button and import the image into the website. Open it. Enlarge the size of the crop box and make sure the whole image is in the crop box. Confirm. Now you can see the little hand is pointing at this button, so we need to click on this button, color condensation, so you will see all the colors from the image. The edge of the image looks very blurry. There are so many dark gray and light gray on the edge, so we need to turn them into black or into the white color. Using the eyedropper, select the black and Click on the Format Painter. Use the Format Painter to change the gray colors. We start from dark gray and gradually go to light gray. Just with one click, you can see the edge of the whole image is changing. I think the edge is okay now, so I'm going to use the eyedropper, select the background color, and use the frame painter to turn the other gray boxes into white. So the edge is becoming super clear now. And then we need to do something about the details. You can see something on her head. Use the eyedropper to select the pink color and use the frame painter to apply the pink to the dark pink here. Then use the brush tool to fill one little box see that to make this skull look symmetrical and for the rest we need to change the details mostly we just need to use the eyedropper to select the color we want from the image and then use the brush tool to change the color of the box so it's kind of like repeat doing it until you get the effect that you want to change the color of the mouth, use the eyedropper to select the pink on the head and uh, change the saturation of it. And we choose a light pink, then use the bucket field to apply this pink to her mouth. Then use the eyedropper to select colors and use the brush tool to fill the boxes. Last, we need to change the background color of the pixel gray, select a purple and change the saturation of it. Then use the bucket fill tool and fill the background with purple. Click on the color condensation and you can see all the colors from the image. It has two black in the image, so we can use the eyedropper to select the black that we want and use the format painter to change the other black color. Click on color condensation again. Finally, this pixel grade is finished. 
click on the number in the grid button. If you do a tapestry crochet, then choose the back and forth numbering mode and uh, click on the bulb to highlight the rows that you want to work on. Then you can start to crochet. That's the video for today. I hope you guys can know how to use gridging to make any piece of gray pattern. If you have any questions, you can leave your comment below and I'll definitely get to you as soon as I can. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.